lot of people of color went through to express themselves and so as far as dance and drama and music. Mm -hmm. And so I, I really excel in the martial arts part and uh, uh, the theater and actor. And to this day, uh, those two things are hand in hand with me. So if uh, I'm doing a play, I'm doing a film, I'm doing a television show, but at the same time, I still continue to teach martial arts, uh, fit fitness, and uh, I give back to like the bedside boxing program, the Golden Glove program. So for vets, straight left hmm? for vets, you said no bedside. Oh, yeah, bed bedside style. boxing. Yeah, <laughs> I grew up in Clinton Hill, <laughs> but in uh, bedside, it's a boxing program. So I volunteer a lot of my services. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh. This was your, what was your father's name? My, his, his his name is Preston Preston Riddick. Yeah, he was a uh, part of the. Uh, that whole uh, 70s movement and uh, as uh, the, the theater, independent theater, really strong revolutionary theater. Uh, he was in Superfly, Gordon's Ward, and you know, movies like that. But I was too young to see it, so I couldn't see it. You know, he wouldn't allow me to see it. <laughs> I was a baby then, but I, I didn't see Superfly until I was like 18 years old on VHS. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's a love scene in uh, Superfly where Sheila Frazier is a very beautiful woman, and so when she's making love, like her excuse me, my buttocks is out, out, out of the water and it goes on for about four or five minutes. So even though, you know, um, he wouldn't let us see it, you know, he would just, you know, even though he was in it, he said, no, my children can't see it. So I, I didn't see it till like, you know, I was 18 years old. Yeah, yeah. But he's, he pretty much taught me everything. So when I got to Brooklyn College, it was just polishing, you know, but he taught me the raw sense of, you know, understanding it, grasping it right away and making it happen. I didn't over-intellectualize anything as far as an actor. I wasn't, you know, uh, overly cerebral about it. You know, if I read something, I would feel it, you know, in an instinctive way. And I would just do it and, and uh, make it happen. Um, and uh, then, you know, you allow yourself to be directed. You know, I think, I think when you have a director, that's one thing that an actor needs to do. If you really trust the director, you know, be an open vessel. You bring something forward, you know, to the rehearsal, and then see see what he says. And then I it, remember, it is always a collaboration. Is you know, you know, it's always a collaboration. You know, I, I don't I don't I'm not comfortable with actors that are overly arrogant or you know stiff or they, this is the only way. But then you run into directors who have you know their own issues too. You know, I've ran I've run into an act a director, a prominent director, at the audition. He said, okay, so this is the way I want you to do. I want you to go over here, I want you to say this, and I want you to do this line here. And I, had, I didn't even get a chance to read yet. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about prominent OB award-winning director. Uh, and so you get people like that, you know. But it comes to, uh, to a time where if you've done it long enough, if you've done it long enough as far as the theater's concerned, when you get to the point where your peers respect you, the creative staff, respect you and then you get a sense of the craft where you actually trust yourself you can really start trusting your instincts you know and that's what you should go with first trust your instinct go with that first and then in an audition they will what they do give you an adjustment and sometimes it'll be a, a 180 degrees boom i mean you go in there and think it's a certain way that it's intense and it's fiery and they'll say uh especially in law and order is how central he's, he's not even worried about it. you're not even worried about this guy this guy's a little peon this guy you know he's just like a little fly on your shoulder so don't give him so much and then it's a whole different take now that actor that director is, is almost testing you he wants to see if you can take direction because <clears throat> they have the series regulars you are a guest star they don't have time to uh uh you know waste with you so much they want to know if you can come in there hit it, hit the, you know, so they can really, you're a part of the, you know, the cast. So that's what I was saying. Yeah. Do you direct at all? Oh, yeah, I do. You, direct do? It. you know, I started off as a, I went to Brooklyn College. Where's my man at here? He's, you know, he's the album out here. Good guy, he's growing up with me. <laughs> and uh, majoring in theater, I was a student director, and uh, I would literally, um, you know, would, you know, just, we, I didn't, I didn't do any of the main stage, uh, uh, productions. Uh, I pretty much stayed with the, uh, they had a, a, a black theater ensemble mm -hmm. under uh, Professor J. Scott Kennedy and uh, I kind of hung out with them and did their, a lot of their stuff too. Uh, and uh, then I started student directing and I um, started getting nominated for certain awards 
I did direct the, the Colored Museum, George C. Wolfe's Colored Museum, at, um, and then started getting nominated for certain awards, and then I went professional. Yeah, uh, certain awards, as in Adele Cole Awards, like the lady who was here today, she's uh, Adele Cole Award, you know, yeah. president. Oh, That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. yeah and, 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 and I still, to this day, have it on my resume. I still have it on my resume. You know, people have, you know, it, you know, people put certain awards, you know, up on a pedestal uh, above others, uh, but uh, that will never go off my resume. You know, it's a, it's a wonderful, you know, powerful organization that recognizes uh, uh, excellence in th uh, theater of people of color. And uh, you know, before all the boycotts or anything like that, they were, they were you know rewarding and honoring people of color, in grassroots community theater all the way up to Off Broadway. I think yeah, Off Broadway, yeah. And uh, they were around. I think when my father was doing plays, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have the opportunity to act with your father? Oh yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Literally, that's all I knew as a child. You know, growing up, I was on stage. He did Day of Absence. Mm -hmm. He did. Um, it's another play that he did. It was a very popular play, but um, I was honored to act with him. Mm -hmm. And not only that, he's a writer. So for me to take on some of his pieces, he, uh, you know, some of the monologues, it's, it was like a, a baton being passed off to say, now, you, now you're ready. Mm -hmm. and, and literally, when I got to high school, uh, and I say this in the most humble way, uh, they literally would ask, "What is your technique? Where, where have you been? I mean, what's..." Mm -hmm. How did you get this level of acting? And I didn't have an answer to give what my technique is. It's like the Nike commercial, just do it. <laughs> just literally, just do it. And when I got to Brooklyn College, that's why you gotta be very careful. Sometimes you'll get to a different places where people don't, that don't look like you. And they have a certain rhythm or a certain energy, and it's all love. But there are, some of them were really being extra cerebral about the role. And then they were just, you know, just clouding their brain with too much extracurricular thought where it got in the way of their natural being. So they would, oh, and then they would get up there and it would just be, you know, not good, not good. And uh, I would look at it, you know, coming up from Brooklyn, I, you know, going out to, you know, then, you know, moving out to Coney Island and then coming here at Brooklyn College with these people that came from all over. And I said to myself, that's, that's not natural. You know, so I think, uh, I think the, the, you know, the approach is to, this is how I think what acting is. Acting to me is if they took a little pinhole camera where they, you know, they brought it up through a tunnel, through a grate, out through another, uh, you know, kind of a hallway, uh, kind of passageway into, uh, you know, through your window, through your Venetian blinds, and then they recorded you having a conversation with your sister and your mother or your lady or your lover when no one's think, looking, can you capture that, <clears throat> that moment on film? Can you capture it naturally? And a lot of us can't. Case in point, when you see bloopers, you'll see, you know, a bloopers reel. You'll see actors acting, and they're doing, and all of a sudden someone messes up a line and they start laughing. And you know they messed up. Yeah. That laugh is never the same <laughs> as a laugh that's uh, the manufactured laugh. You go, that's a laugh. That's a real laugh. Can you, can you do that when the lights, that light comes on? And that's what we have to do. That's what, that's what you all should struggle to. It's never, nothing heavy, nothing heavy. Just say it. Just say it. Just do it. You don't have to, you know, uh, you know, you know, just, you know, watch the melodrama. You know, that's a key. That's a key. Watch the melodrama. Just do it. Just say it as, as if you would be naturally talking to someone in a conversation and dialogue. And sometimes less is more. In many cases, less is more. Because the audience is more intelligent than you think they are. Um, you know, but I, 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 I want to tell you that I celebrate you all. I celebrate you all and uh, I know this, I don't know the age ranges. I know he's probably the youngest. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> this youngest. And um, and I don't know who's the oldest. <laughs> 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 right, right. Well, she, she said you so. I said she saw I, uh, you growing up. I was like, wait a minute, what's going on here? I think it was the thing where you, she saw you growing up as a, as a child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that. I said she, she's a, she's a very young looking woman. <laughs> 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 I 
I said, hold on now. <laughs> but I would say that um, everybody, everybody brought, you know, something to the table. As, as an actor, like I said, just trust yourselves. Watch, you know, try to really strive for the naturalness as you, as you, as you, uh, as you get more fine tuned as getting more plays, watch the natural, because the audience is more intelligent than you think you are, intelligent than you think they are. Uh, and, uh, and just be, just be, just be. I, like I said, I en enjoyed it, I enjoyed it. And I really celebrate you too, because uh, I, I'm telling you, even actors who have been out here, sometimes there's no work. And you just have to, like in the gym, you just have to continue to fine tune, like you do your push-ups, you do your chin-ups, you realize that your triceps are not popping anymore, your abs are what, and you gotta get like this, and that's the same thing with the acting craft. You just gotta keep doing it, keep doing it. And all you have a, a really nice spark and presence. So when you come to the stage, people wanna know who you are. Can so, I ask you one question? Yes, ma'am. Um, how do you personally, with stage, negotiate natural with projection and the back of the house? That's the thing about, you know, one thing. Now, these one, are different on film, right? Right, but right. You are going to be called Miss Dorothy Dandridge now. Like, I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, wow, that's hard. Thank you. There's a misconception that somebody said, no, but this is a theater, and we have to, it's theater. That's, throw that away. Mm -hmm. Throw that away. It's simple elevation. It's like, uh, one of the things that he he was able to do is that you heard him when you came out. You know, he I think you had a sense of like, okay, we got it. We got to hear you. So that volume has to pop to the back. Um, within that volume popping, you still have to maintain naturalness, and that's the a technique. Uh, uh, I think that what it is is that the gestures have to be a little more magnified but not to the point where it's unnatural. You know, like for example, when that camera's on you, just, uh, if you remember the Sopranos, they would have scenes where that camera would be on, you know, it was a moment when he would just come in the room, uh, uh, Tony Soprano, and then he would just kind of look. And it spoke volumes. It spoke volumes. In the theater, you may have to do a little bit more than that. But I, I really would say the investment in what you are saying the investment in what you true. What is your thought process? What are you trying to convey? What are you trying to, how are you relating to each other? What's, what's the message in, the, in, in what you're saying? What's, you know, when you read the play, what is the thought process? What is, where are the arts? <clears throat> what are the different relationships? What are, what, are the liberty, what are the intangibles? All those things. And you start it by just saying, I'm gonna say, hey man, how you doing? I was going to, I like this red you know, shirt we have on. You know, blue and you know, black and it's cool. And you look for his age, oh you don't want to talk to me, you know, I talk to you weird. And then you have to just boom, bring it up. Bring it up. A you know slice of reality. Say it again. That's a high slice of reality. Absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. Like for there's a moment when you kind of slap and something like that and you look at the hand. That does you don't have to do that. I mean, there's moments that you, you know, this boom, and instead of coming out like this, you know, the audience got it, had it already, you know, and I'm just speaking truth, you know, you know, boom, and then it's like you saw her reaction, and then that was enough, because it was there already. So when you come out here, that's being, you're uh, being overly demonstrative, uh, not bringing it out like this, uh, because, you know, you're a handsome brother, and you have the presence, and you have the look, and you have the height, and everything like that. So that's you're already there. You know, when you come on the stage, you like you know. So in other words, you don't have to you know do as much as you know, as that. So it's boom. You saw her reaction, and then it could have been just walk around, come in here because we know we know you didn't really do want to do it. And then uh, and then you had some lovely moments too. You know, you had some lovely moments. Everybody. Had you know one of the things that um, you know this young man, his uh, his stillness, his stillness was absolutely wonderful, beautiful. I'm very honest. Uh, there were moments where he just looked at people, 
and he was, he was, but I tried to talk to you. I, tr I tried to, no one would listen to me. And he was like, he looked at you like, Mama, you know, Mama, uh, Mama you? Omi. Mama Omi. Because you wouldn't love me. And it was like he was hurt, and it was, and it was this moment that he was just looking at everybody, and his wheels were spinning, and this whole thing of take these handcuffs off me, you felt the child saying, I'm hurt, I'm in pain. So here he is, a young man, but at the same time, these handcuffs are too tight. It's like a four-year-old, a child, a man-child in the promised land, like the play, you know? It's like, you know, this, and it, it, it was just very, these, these handcuffs are too tight. And it, we got it, we got it. You know, the, the, your, 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 your pain that you, you carry all the way through, you know, you, 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 your art that you were, you were giving, your sense of honesty, we, you know, we went there with you. You know, your sense of, you know, the, 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 the proud, you know, sister, the church woman, and then some of the church women can be some of the most hypocritical people. <laughs> <ones we know. laughs> and we're like, sometimes my pastor says, look, the best you can do is just be quiet. Don't be telling what God said. And sometimes it's the devil telling something to you. You know, and so you were able to bring, you know, you, to bring those moments, you know, like you had that powerful presence and stuff like that. So, you know, like I said, everything started working, you know, I, I, uh, the first play that I worked with uh, Mr. Robinson, is Joe Turner's coming and gone, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. directing wise. Yeah, did. But you did My Mama the Super Action Hero. Maybe? No, I didn't do that. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. It was I good. know what I did. Yes. I did, I, at the Schomburg, I directed you in one of Morty's readings. That's exactly right. Exactly yeah. right. That's exactly That's how I met you. That's yeah, exactly that's right. right. And then and he, he helped us with uh, Joe Turner's Coming and Gone. That's right. And it turned out to be a beautiful piece of work. It, I'll show it, you some of the pictures. I'll show you again. It was, he, he would literally. What he that's did, right. just, <laughs> just, yeah, a trust, it's just a natural trust that he had and respect for me and the respect that I have for him. And um, so we came, we, and he, he, this, he, was, he was a one-man army. He had his kids, the kids. I can't tell you how this, this high school group, they were so mature. They were, they were just there, and you know, you were part of the next wave coming in. These high school kids could have been anywhere in the street, you know, shooting dice. I don't know, no, 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 they don't shoot dice anymore. But, uh, but hanging out, you know, chasing or whatever, and the phones and stuff like that. But they were in this high school at Boys and Girls High in bed -Stuy, working the craft for hours and hours and hours. So he had everybody doing something. But Mr. Robinson, he had he did the, the flats, the, the set, the decor. He was, uh, you know, he was just doing it. I'm going to be flats today. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, and what he did, he put it up, and he almost said, okay, Jacinto, now you put the polishing touch on. So he gave me, he gave me the structure. And so what I did is watch the melodramatic moments. I caught everything. We painted it every moment. That, and there were moments that I can do with each and every one here. Watch those moments. Watch those grand moments, you know, focus, oh no, you don't need that to do, stop away. I would have stopped and stopped, started a lot of stuff here today. I would have said, boom, now talk to her. No, 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 talk to her. Just tell her what you want to say. Boom to him, you with, to your wife, all those things. Just, just speak to her. Just speak, just take it back, no, just no, 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 I want to hear it. I want to hear the thrust of the line. Because if you, if you can hear yourself, you're like, oh, that sounds like kind of choppy, disjointed. Just talk to her, just say it, you know? And uh, so that was the, uh, the polishing. So we were able to get, we, we you know, built three-dimensional characters. We were able to really get to the emotional chord. We stopped, the, you know, a lot of the broad strokes. You want to do broad strokes, then you want to just bring it in. You want to bring it in. But again, I I'm, I'm have to say this. I, wanna, I was proud of everybody on this stage. And I was happy for you all, and I, and I celebrated you all. And um, I, I'm just, I don't come here as an actor who goes, let me see what these guys are gonna do. I don't do that. I give you the best of the best, and I, and I, t I try to take the journey with you, because I know who you're associated with. You know, I, so, let me, can, I, can I ask you something for me? Uh, starting with you, uh, we, you, you have, you, what have you done as far as, um, in, in, in life as far as uh, the theater? Did, did, were you always in the theaters? Uh, as a child, or did you come late or? Yes and no. I, I started out as a dancer, uh -huh. and so I started dancing when I was seven, and then um, I ended.
ended up dancing with Dance Theater of Harlem. Oh. And then I moved into acting. Okay. Do you know Carmen de Lavalade? Of course. Yeah, she did. You just look, I mean, when I'm looking at you, you have that presence. Yeah, your presence. And so you, um, Dance Theater of Harlem, mm -hmm. they, they're about to do something now, right? Yes, they are. They're getting yes. ready to go into season. Yeah, yeah I'm just going to look. And, um, There's a little bit more that I think another side that she needs to express. Okay. And so you, for you to know. Oh. I just think it's another part of the treasure but chest. But it doesn't have anything to do with the question. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, wait a minute. What was okay, the question? Okay, it does have something yeah. to do with the question. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Where you been? In addition, after I stopped dancing, I went to graduate school, and I, um, I have a PhD in history and African American studies. Oh, and, and what? African American history and Af African American history. Wow. But she went to Yale. Wow. <laughs> and then, then we just have that conversation. <laughs> Listen, he said, I said, so did you go to Princeton? He said, no, no. I said, what are you talking about? No, no, no. You could have gone to Princeton. And why couldn't you? I know people that have gone on to get their theology degrees and their architecture degrees, and, and here you are, a, you know, a woman, a beautiful woman of color with a uh, PhD in, in African studies, African and history. Af African, African American history. history. American yeah. history. Right on. Did you have you been to the museum in DC? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, beautiful. I actually advised on it. Oh, my so you know, now that was important. <laughs> <laughs> Look, take the camera and put it on her. Oh, <laughs> very good. Right. 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 With her absolutely, to her absolutely, and, so that's, that's, yeah. and that's it's uh, it's and that's what I was talking about. You know, your pain, your and and the arcs that you were able to, uh, you know. I mean, just it's just you, the, you know how you kind of stroked it, you know, and and we, and we ride with you, we ride with you, we ride with your pain and your elegance too. There was a one Donald Vogel wrote uh, about Diane Carroll in the movie Claudine. He said she was, um, what was it? She was, uh, she had, yeah, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase now, but there was, there was elegance to her poverty, something like that. She was royal and regal even in her poverty. And, in, and that's saying that she did not play it in a way where it was not true. But even in, in when a, a poor woman with no husband, and six, seven ch children, there was a regalness, you know, to her, her, her stature and her presence and who she felt she was. Yes, I have six or seven children, but I'm still worthwhile mm -hmm. with no father. I think eight, um, seven, eight, mm -hmm. and that was a powerful performance, her, you know, with her and uh, James O. Jones. Mm -hmm. what, is your, what is your story? Uh, well, when I was younger in public school, I used to be in plays and um, but they would never call me back. I wanted, I just loved to do them. But um, my mom was a seamstress and I was always sewing. So I carried that through That's my life. Right. Yeah, because I come from a family of tailors and artists. And um, I always kept that with me. And I wound up, you know, growing up in those days, we would always do our beads and clothing and all that. And then it was nothing. And then I wound up now making hats when I have time and doing jewelry. And sometimes people ask me to mend things. And, um, I, either of you pursuing a career in acting or? Yes. Yeah, okay. Are you doing, a, are you teaching anywhere? Sorry, I didn't have my hand in there yet. Are you teaching anywhere? Are you a professor? Uh, yeah, I teach at City College. City College. Mm -hmm. You're still a uh, professor there? Yeah, well, I'm an assistant professor. All right, okay. And, that's and my day job. That's your day job. <laughs> and you're full time? Uh, yeah. All right, okay. But full time only means two days a week. So. Two days, okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. And you are pursuing your. Um, Acting, yeah. I've been on stage as a storyteller. I've done some imp uh, musical improv. Right. And um, I've written monologues, which I've interviewed, which I've gone on my auditions with, and they kind of like it. Because I had a hard time taking someone's monologue and trying to, mm -hmm. I couldn't feel it. So I would just, I just wrote something, written something for myself. Right. And um, so I like to write, and I'm writing a book and working on some scripts. As you, with your power, your presence, your, your beauty on stage, your, I mean, your, you know, just speak to her. Just let her know where you are. Your, your church, you know, it's, it's just right there. It's right there. You don't have to put anything on it. You don't have to say, I'm a church woman. You know, you just, you know, boom, when you come in there, when you come in that moment, it's the conversation, the dialogue. What are you trying to say to her? And trust that because it's there. This is apology. This is all that we're just talking about tweaking. 
you just try calibrating, you know, like on an engine, on an engine, or like just try to calibrate. You guys get, did it, you know, you, you, you put it out there, so now we're just tweaking. Now we're just tweaking, it's polishing, you know, it's like literally I, uh, you know, your, your abs are there. We just got, we can't see it yet, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just, we got to get a little bit of this fat off, you know, and that's what it is. We see, just talk to her. Tell her what the principle, what did God say? You know, basically God said this, and then, you know, boom, 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 and the Bible says this, and let me tell you something, it's just there, you know? What's your story? Um, I went to college and graduate school for theater performance. Um, before moving to New York, I did regional theater, and uh, then moved to New York about, God, now it's like 20 years ago. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I was only a baby then. I'll <laughs> see. <laughs> That's right. And then, uh, uh, actually, for a while, I got caught up in the nine to five corporate cycle world. Then finally left that, and now trying to pursue this. And uh, I started writing my own stuff and produced my first play yeah, last year. Play last year. Um, um, so. What regional theaters did you work in? Uh, Milwaukee Repertory Theater, yeah. Cleveland Playhouse, National Theater of the Deaf, um, Great Lake Shakespeare. Did I say that already? No, no, <laughs> no. Cle Cle Cleveland, uh, Cleveland, yeah, Cleveland Great Lake is in great, and yeah. Cleveland Play, yeah, and Milwaukee Rep, Cleveland. yeah. As, as uh, you know, regional theater, most actors, what happens is that basically when you're in New York, it's just not New York. Broadway is a very political, you know, got everybody. So a lot of the stuff that you're going to do is out in the region. But guess what? Playwrights test their stuff in the region. August Wilson, everybody test their stuff in the region. Try to work it to New York, get it to Broadway, Manhattan Theater Club, Broadway, off a second stage, you know, signature theater. And then when it closes, it goes back into the regional theater. And then you want to you want you want to try to you want to try to catch it as it's coming onto Broadway, but Denzel is waiting for it. So then all of a sudden you know you're out you know Jeffrey Wright, all these guys and stuff like that. You just try to do the best you can, and then you want to catch the first Yale uh, rep production, and that's how you make your money. And you know and you know theater doesn't pay like Broadway, but at your age, there's nothing wrong with eight hundred a week. Give oh, you your yeah. own apartment, you fly you oh, in, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, fly you in, fly you out, all you, you know, give you your car while you're down there, and yeah. you can break the script down. There's nothing wrong with that, right? No, good. Yeah, right? <laughs> that's good. That's for me. That's yeah. good. Which, which, let me get a time check. I just want to, yeah, I got to no, catch my Easter five, suit. Five. Okay, no, this guy, I just got an yeah. Easter suit. I got to, they, it was tailored <laughs> for oh, me. Okay. And I wanted to stop. But Mr. what just, uh, uh, sister, before we go, these two were in uh, Oedipus, the king. Oh, you remember yes. the production I did? You couldn't make it. I couldn't make yeah. that one. No, that's what. Yeah. Oh, I have the DVD. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky. Yeah, you must stay and watch me play the video. I had a prison. I had a prison break. My father did it, and that was the first one he put. My sister, that's one year older than me, uh, and that play. She's you know. a performer also. Yeah. No, no. It's just we had to do it. We uh, just. <laughs> my father, you know, we had three of us all together, and he didn't play. If we missed martial arts practice, if we. My mother one time uh, took us out to the movie and so we could go see the movie Lady Kung Fu or something like that. Yeah. And he, mar <laughs> he marched through the Clinton Hill Co-op and he was so upset. He said, you, you, and you, let's go. And we marched like little chickadees to the, back to the martial arts program. But the great thing is that we had great role, role models there. And to this day, you know, martial arts and everything like this is a way of life. We use it on studying martial arts, focusing and everything. You know, it's a way of self-defense, you know, walking down the street with a sense of confidence. Yeah. What, is, what is your story, young man? Uh, 21? 21, yeah. Yeah, what school? Uh, well, um, I went to BMCC. Okay. And um, at first, I was going in to pursue business and management because of the parents. Right. And whatnot. But I've been acting since eighth grade. Okay. And um, then I, when I went to high school, repertory company, theater art high school on 40, West 43rd Street, I started pursuing acting there and, you know, learning the craft and whatnot. Um, but I wasn't in any of the plays in my school until I graduated. I uh, did my first play on Roundabout Theater. Oh. That was my first off-Broadway off play. Yeah. You did a play at the Roundabout? Yeah. Wow. Like 2014. Yeah. Did, you have, did you have every agent representation? I think so. Okay, no, no, so did you have an agent submit you there? No, 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 no. Okay. No, I went there by myself. I, but Roundabout is a top notch theater. Yeah. Wow. I mean was it was it a, a was it was it a roundabout produced play? 
or was it a, 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 a separate theater company that rented something at the round, Roundabout? Roundabout produced play. That's a, that's a major. Yeah, I, I didn't yeah. think that. I was just like, it's, it's yeah. a play. I'm just, I'm just here. So. Roundabout, you know, that's great to have it in your resume. Yeah. How about you? you and, and so now, now you still at BMCC, or did you finish your two Oh, years? no, no. I'm, I took a break. And, okay. Because, you know, uh, school and work and stuff like that. So I've just been pursuing acting, like, off-Broadway plays and short films and whatnot. And this is, like, my fourth off-Broadway play right now. So. Well, I think two things with you, young man, I really mean it. I think you should get one in one of the, the Tisch program. I think you should get in the undergraduate uh, uh, at NYU. Uh, I think, you know, uh, Yale. I think you should go to, uh, uh, you know, uh, if, if the other ones that, you know, SUNY Purchase, mm -hmm. I think, it, you know, who had a great pro program. Uh, Rutgers has a great theater program. I think that you really, really need to look at that. And if you don't, if you want to go out into the world, you know, um, I'm going to give you everybody a pre pretty much broad stroke, but if, you know, there's a way to go out in the world now, you know, because your stillness is, 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 is absolutely beautiful. You know? Thank you. Yeah. What about you, young man? And how old are you? I'm 24. 24, 24, okay. Yeah. That's the next one up. Yes, yeah. I'm going to be 25 in a couple of months. That's what, yeah, okay. <laughs> and I was like looking at her, like, 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 wow, she's going to be young, boy. <laughs> but, <laughs> but at the same time, she, like, she has a youth in her face, like, say, oh, I can see it. I can see it. Yeah, go ahead. I can see you being attracted to her. <laughs> of course. Yes. Um, um, <laughs> man, how do I start? Yes. I guess I started acting when I was like six or seven years old. Mm -hmm. And then I think I was doing like school plays and church plays. And then I took nine years off. And then when I was 17 or 18, I got into like musical theater yeah. in high school. And then I carried it with me to Hunter College. So I went to Hunter College, I majored in theater. I did a few productions there. I was in Clybourne Park and wow. the Cherry Orchard, yes. So I was an old man in the Cherry Orchard, so that oh, was fun. Um, and after that, I did like a city college play. It was like a festival thing. Wow. And this is my first off-Broadway play. So yeah, I'm brought in, I guess, brought in my horizons. Well, right, yeah. you, have, you have a look that that's uh, uh, <coughs> uh, you know quite sought after in you know in the theater and uh, and uh, especially in film you know so um, I would say continue to work on the craft to work on the craft to work on the craft mm -hmm. to really get that naturalness going the you know the sense of what it is is this the word truth what it is is truth mm -hmm. can I believe you the honesty we can know from myself, did I believe myself? I watch myself on TV like this sometimes, like this, uh, <laughs> like this, and yeah. then I go, okay, okay, I didn't like that one, uh. but then I go, okay, all right, I like that one, I like that one. It's a role that I did in Special Victims Unit where I play this Colombian drug lord, and that's the one that when if I walk from here to uh, <laughs> to the store, people people know, and uh, and um, and they say, hey man, uh, Rafael Zapato or something like that. And, uh, but I knew that as soon as I, I saw himself coming down the spiral stairs on a boat, I knew that, that that was going to be, I touched a nerve, I struck a chord. But you know, I'm telling you, sometimes you watch yourself like, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm my uh, worst critic, I'm yeah. my worst critic. Mm -hmm. to, to finish up, as we talked about really quick, the Actors Connection. There's an organization <coughs> called the Actors Connection. Literally, okay, and um, I'm really telling you, that's how I got my agent that I'm with now. It was on my first one, my first seminar there. I was, uh, I was in, in the community theater. Uh, me and Isaiah Washington was in a play and I got a nominee for the Delco. The woman who directed was Trezana Beverly who won the, the Tony for Colored Girls. She recommended me to Don Buckwall and they were the big boys. Uh, and they rolled out the red carpet based on, I had a VHS copy of like a stock footage of me doing Colored Museum and just like one day on the soap or something, one like to live, and uh, they signed me. And, uh, but after two years, they got kind of lazy with me. And I went to the Actors Connection. A friend of mine asked me, she says, Hacinto, do you mind doing a scene with me? I know you were Don Buckwell. And I said, no, 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 they don't know what they're gonna do with me in this third year. I'll come down, 
she picked a soap opera monologue out of, a, out of Barnes and Noble as a, kind of an incestuous thing. I was this violent brother who, uh, you know, of course we had some type of sexual relationship when we were kids and she, she broke away from the family, but all the inheritance came to me and I'm coming to let her know that the parents have passed away and we got this money. And she's like, okay, just, and I, and I said, I won't give it to you until we can resume our relationship again. And it's the same way I put a belt around her neck and, um, and it was very violent and it was very, and at that time, all the actors stayed inside while you did your scene in front of the, the agent. Yeah. Uh, and um, he called me the next day. He called me the next day and said, do you mind? And then he said, do you mind if I set you up with a play called play, Blade to the Heat at the Public? Don Buckwall couldn't even give me the audition. Mm. They were the big boys. But this small little agent got me the audition in 10 minutes and almost got it. But a celebrity got it over me, literally. This, I ran into the celebrity at Barnes and Noble. He said, Jacinto, I, I heard about you, man. I told George C. Wolf, I'm about to turn down this series. What are you going to do? I know this cat named Jacinto that's doing it, you know, that I'm up, you know, let me know. And he gave it to him. And that was, I, I, that was one of the best compliments I could, you know, get. But anyway, the actor's connection, you're going to be taking your pictures and resumes and sending them out. It's a book called The Call Sheets. The Call Sheets, as you know, is a list of reputable agents. If one agent asks you for one penny, we need five dollars, walk out the door. Walk out the door. Get your pictures and resume outside from a professional acting headshot person. Come to a, you know, you create. I was at Brooklyn College. I had different, like, you know, I performed at different places in Brooklyn College. But I didn't go Brooklyn College, Brooklyn College, Brooklyn in my resume. I said the little theater, it was at Brooklyn College. <laughs> I said, well, what, what, you know, whatever I was. And I did different places, so I was creative. So now I'm in a room, so the guy says, so where's the little theater? Oh, Brooklyn College, you know? <laughs> where's, the, where's the black box theater? Oh, Brooklyn College. And then, but now I'm in a room. So you gotta be creative, don't lie. Don't lie, because somebody said, oh, okay, I see that you did a guest lead. Well, I directed that. I don't remember directing that. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, yeah. it happens, man. Do you audition with them to get into actors? Oh, no, that's what, the, so the Actors Connection is one of those seminars that you sign up for. A professional agent comes and, you know, does like what I'm doing, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so he gives you a sense of the business, what you do with pictures and resumes, how to, how to audition, what decides, what's a part of a script. And they give you that sense, and then you can ask them all the questions, and then you can do it. Uh, at that time, it was a three-minute monologue or six-minute scene. Uh, and then the actor stayed in the room. But now they go out the room and you do you have a low independent one with them. Well, I did it within like 16 people. They have like maybe one is like $28 by itself, but you get a package of three for like 78. And I'm telling you, based on, you know, if you are that person that they need at that moment, it could happen. There are people that come out of school and their success is coming out of school and landing a television series. Well, that wasn't mine. One of my success stories is going to the Actors uh, Connection one time and landing an agent. But sometimes it makes it take some tenth time. Mm -hmm. I, I would, uh, with Law and Order, that was my mind as such. I've done five episodes of Law and Order, would have done seven. Uh, but Blue Bloods, they love me so far, but I, they haven't hired me yet. But they like love it. Yes, it was brilliant, excellent, but they still haven't hired me. But Law and Order is a show that I go in there, if it's there, I'm gonna, you know, I, I stood like an 86-88% chance of getting it. So that's one of the things. Another thing is being in a play like this, saying that I'm in this play, you send your, your pictures and resume and said, I love this agency, I heard you, you know, you represent Scarlett Johansson, you know, Michael uh, Wright, Jeffrey Wright, uh, Terrence Howard, I love this work, I have something to bring. Uh, I'm young, I just graduated uh, Rutgers, NYU, uh, uh, Hunter, or you know, uh, no, you didn't say Hunter. You said I did graduate. Yeah, Hunter, yeah, Hunter year, did, yeah. College and stuff like that. Um, uh, you know, say something special. I would love to give you comps to the show. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, please let me know. You get that, that beautiful fly that you had, and then the agent goes, "Hey, uh, uh, George, the sub agent. What are you doing? I like this kid's look. Um, he's offering t two tickets at, on Friday. You have any time?" And he goes to see, he looks, he says, right outside there, and you don't even know he's out there. Next you know, he calls Mr. Robinson, say, you got an actor, I would love to bring him in. So those are the things you do. 
Another thing is a, a recommendation from an, a person inside source, a people that you know are in and said, hey, can, I, can you recommend me to your agency? Um, how it works is the number one way to get an agent, be in one of the top schools. Be 20, 21 years old, you are like the NBA drafts, NFL drafts. They're waiting for you. They're sitting at the Yale you know, consortium or leagues just waiting like this. Give me that 21-year-old, give me that 22-year-old, you know, boom. And then they, they sign them up. That's one extreme. The other part is an, as an actor who's been in that world that does not like their agent anymore and says, hey, I want to come over there. The agent looks at because you've been beating their clients out for these roles. I hate to say that beating. I don't like. Let me tell you something real quick. There's the last thing. Isaiah Washington was in a uh, play with me. Uh, <laughs> saw him say, young men. And uh, we were about to go get our first professional play, directed by Mary McClinton, who's like premier African American d director uh, for all of August Wilson plays. He's one of the top five. We went from making a hundred dollars a week to that play was going to pay us seven fifty a week at Center Stage, and that's like mind blowing. As you know, it's not mind blowing then, but it's mind blowing, you know, when you're like a you know uh, a kid, you know. But he said he couldn't do it. Because I said, I called him, I said, Isaiah, I heard you booked it too. And he said, uh, no, nah, man, buddy, I don't know if I can do it. And I said, why? He said, because the soap opera, he's up for a soap opera. He said, it's the difference between them paying me five grand a week, I said to him. So I said, what are you going to do? And he said, they, it's not definite, but I'm on hold. But center stage is saying, Baltimore center stage, as you know, uh, they need an answer. Well, he, you know, had to turn down the center stage. Uh, stage offer to wait on this soap offer. He didn't get either one of them. Wow. He didn't get the soap. He didn't get the play. The brother who got the play went on and won the mm. uh, the uh, soap opera newcomer of the year. Now, is that the end? No. I can tell you. I know. I will say this guy's name, but I don't want to. You know, I don't even know what he's doing. I see all, all of a sudden blows up in a Spike Lee film. Boom. Police boys, what I did, came back to him in New York. They remembered how good his audition was. He got that, and next thing he blows up. Unfortunately, what happened on Grey's Anatomy, he uses the F word. I don't know if you know that. And they fired him for using the F word. And I'm telling you that Isaiah Washington is not homophobic. It was wrong what they did to him. Uh, uh, Isaiah Washington is very loving toward you know everybody. And he's not, you know, like I said, he had personality, you know, things that, you know, so that's why a lot of people didn't march out for him because he has these little personality issues, but he was not homophobic. That's the one thing that I could say, you know, uh, you know, the, the guy that wrote the play was, you know, yeah. That's funny because me and Tim was having a conversation about how the media betrays you. Like, if you say something like, if I'm having a conversation with you right now, and I say, oh, ready? I want to do a gay role automatically. <laughs> They turn it around and make something else. So. They what? If I'm having a conversation with yeah. you and this is recorded right now, and, I was, yeah. and you ask me, so you know you do any role and such and something like, yeah, but I wouldn't do a, a gay role. Right. And that's not to offend anybody. Right. Just being honest. Yeah. The media would take that and twist your words and try try to make everybody go against you because of that. I would say I it's would say amen to that. To that. Yeah. And I'm telling you, brother, that happens all. Yeah. If there's sometimes as an actor. If you say that's not for me, they, there are people like I'm telling you. I turned down a play, I turned down two or three things because it, I was not comfortable with that. But you sometimes you have an agent who, and you know, forgive me if I, you know, I'm not trying to make mockery. But listen, the agent was like, "So what's wrong with kissing a man?" I said, "So what's wrong with uh, taking your clothes off?" Now that conversation is like you could tell he's obviously gay. So how do you tell a, a gay man that you're not comfortable with it? So you, there's, a, there's a sense of honesty and there's a sense of respect for each other. I would rather, I would rather let the person who's comfortable with that take that you know, on because he could do a better job. Uh, at, the, at the same time, you know, no gay actor can ever say that I ever treated him uh, uh, wrong, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, unprofessional or disrespectful. You know, it's just like, what you are comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And so you have every right to say what, just like every woman could say what she has, is comfortable with. 
She could say what she's comfortable with on a love scene. She could say that she doesn't want to take her certain new clothes. She could say, I'll do this role, but I'm not going to be nude. And you have every right to say that. If you're good, they'll bring in a stunt double. Stand by your principles. Mm -hmm. Be respectful of everyone. Be professional. Be kind. Leave the arrogance out there. Know your self-worth. I tell everybody, I want to just, just acknowledge that I've done something in this business. When I show up at a festival, I, I, I'm telling you, in my way as, as an actor, acknowledge. I work hard to say, listen, oh, that guy's done this. I just got you doing. I, you know, I deserve a certain amount of respect. But once I'm through that door, I'm the actor that's going to show up on time. You don't have to give me any type of special treatment. You don't have to come over here and something like that. Just acknowledge the work and the sweat and tears that I've done in this, in, this, in this business. From the community theater, I paid my dues. There are a lot of people that are doing these YouTube sensations and get up and do a little YouTube and I'm, you know, it's what it is. But I paid my dues and you will always, just like Lupita Nyong'o, all those actresses, uh, uh, you know, especially the black actresses had a you know, chance for that role. But that director didn't see anything special in them. They had hundreds of people directed for that role in 12 Years of a Slave. But here comes this new Peter, Lupita Nyong'o. I met her on Lafayette Avenue. And we just started talking with a group of us. And I said, so she said, I just graduated from Yale, very humble. I said, well, is there anything you know, I can look forward to seeing you in? And she goes, well, I you know, just did a movie called 12 Years of a Slave. She said it as if she was like this little person that said, like, run, like, run, go to run. I thought she was going to be one of these people like this, like that. I've been doing a play at Crossroads Theater, and one of the actresses said, I sent you, you have to see this movie, 12 Years a Slave. This girl named Lupita Nyong'o. I said, wait a minute, that's the girl I've been on the Fifth Avenue. Who acted as though she would lie. Her role was this small. But her truth, when she said, I want to be clean with that soap. But now, because she, now she's, in a, she's fetishized and raped by the master and loathed by the mistress. Then trying to get the connection with the black man who you know, says, I'm not part of you because I'm not really a slave. So she's in that. That's her world. How does she navigate in this world of wanting to love this man who is really married? I understand that. He's, he's a free man. And he's trying to prove throughout the whole play that I'm not one of them which is a very difficult, because how can we feel for you? But I understand it. And then, you know, she's raped and loathed and loved and jealous and all, and that's a very, so she walks away with that robe, and to this day she wears her hair natural, and she's wonderful, she's loving, and she's beautiful, and she's powerful, you know, and she's, and she's powerful, and you don't get them. She, her, she's walking truth. She's walking truth, so I'm just saying as we end, you know, uh, what I'm gonna do, uh, uh, Mr. Robinson, I have a, like a full four minute reel that I'm gonna send it to Mr. Robinson and uh, you can just send it out. And uh, it's, just, it's just a little clip of what, you know, what I've done and um, you can all tell me what you thought, thought about it. But like I said, um, that's one of the ways. Just keep working, keep fine tuning the crown, <clears throat> keep telling the truth, keep telling the truth. It's, it's, it's if I go ahead and email. Now, that was real. I bumped into someone because I was rushing. I told Mr. Robinson, incidentally, uh, if that message was supposed to come at 20 minutes to, uh, to, but for some reason, I didn't realize I sent it. So that's why you got it at 207. I was running late. And I went, I went to turn up uh, 54th Street to the right, but I looked at the number and said 260. And I was like, went and I bumped right into this guy. And he was a guy like you, you know, taller. And I actually really bumped and I grabbed him. I said, are you OK? I said, I'm sorry, are you OK? And he's like, and then he walked off. <laughs> and I was like, and I said, well, I'm not sorry then. Which was wrong. Which was wrong. And I didn't like that I said that. But it was kind of a laugh, like, well, I'm not sorry then. But his thing was like, you know, like, you know, like a roll of the eyes, like, you know, like a very snotty roll. And I said, well, I'm not sorry. But I should have kept the spirit of God right there and said, I'm sorry, whatever level you are on, let it stand. Maybe you could walk away and stuff like that. But I just want to thank you all for just allowing me the time and uh, celebrate. Keep going. Mr. Robinson is going to tell me any other productions you're in, and uh, I'll be there.
I'm sorry, you I just did. wanted to ask one more question. No, no, no. You do martial art, right? Yeah. Have you ever had to, you know, do that in real what? life? Uh, <laughs> I, I literally, I, I, I literally, I, I don't this, have to, huh? You want to tell them the story about when you started to come to work with me? And, uh, you know what? To go on, <laughs> that's, that's, that, that's, you know what? Well, we'll keep that story quiet. Okay. I was about to, Mr. Robinson. I was about to. I was about to. But you promise me you'll keep it quiet? Yes. Yeah. So you can raise your hands on someone. Yes. Oh, but what it does, doing the martial arts, it doesn't last long. It's still three or four seconds. Kapow. You know, and the per and I'm not trying to, it's just like, bing! And then the person has been hit by something that they have never been hit by before. What a speed and, a, you know, uh, you know, uh, a sense of uh, power that they don't know how to deal with. And it's like, they come to, uh, they come to an understanding very quickly. But and after I've done that, I've never stomped anybody at Brown. It's pretty much, I got you, you're down, maybe your nose is broken, which had happened, you're bleeding. And now you don't want a part of it. So now it's like, it's kind of a walk away. But uh, I've had incredible sparring sessions though. But I, I, I spar, I still spar, to, I spar 20 years to this day. You well, know, 20 years old. Yeah. 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 Next one. Yeah, man, you, you, you let me know. You let me know. I'm just sparring. Yeah. I want to see a little sparring. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, get over here. You train? You train? Oh, okay. Especially look out my window when I was teaching a boys and girls in high school. Yeah, like five, five, six years ago. Yeah. And uh, I used to see you out there doing that. That's right. <laughs> on the field, you got on the field. Nice. And I said, oh, wow. There you go, there you go. <laughs> We're on the track together. <laughs> but no, I was one of them original, you know, as a child, like when, when Kung Fu was, Kung Fu, when people train now, it's like they give you a belt in two years, and they, you know, your black belt in two years, and black belts don't mean anything. I've seen black belts kicking like this, you know, kicking like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was growing up, I mean, I mean, you had to, you know, bop, bing, bing. Oh, the elbow, whoa, and, whoa. You know, what that was. So it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was it, you know, you really had to have the power, and you had to under, have the understanding of it. But now I took my nephew to a, I couldn't even teach him what, you know, settle in school because either one was too expensive and was okay, or one was not expensive and the kicks was kicking like this, and they had brown belts on. That's wow. a, that's right under the black belt, you know. Man, so. I just saw a picture of your father, split an image, man. Oh yeah, wow. oh yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And also, um, you played in this film, Color of the Cross. Yes. Easter week, yeah. Check yes. it out. Excellent. Yes, yes, yes. Thank Color you. Color of the Cross. Thank you. Thank he you. also played with Diana Ross in Platinum, Platinum something, right? But I hated yeah. that take. Don't he tell him that. that movie and I always tell him <laughs> that. What was that? What was the movie? Because I love uh, Diana Ross. No, 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 don't tell him that. I hate it. I'll look it up. I, I, no, 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 don't, don't tell him. Uh, <laughs> uh, what's her name? No, listen, I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell you this. I come in with Diana Ross and my thing was like, you know, she was at a club and I'm the manager and it was supposed to be, I can't remember. I was like, you know, I was like, did you, I mean, pretty much uh, uh, get out here. Do you know who's out here waiting for you? You know who's you know kind of club, and I can't remember what it was. Do you know who's out here? And she said, "Come on, now, hurry up, man." But the, he wanted me hickey, like, uh, "Girl, do you know who's out here?" Oh, like this. No. And I said, "Man," I kept, I kept forcing myself. I kept saying that I did seven takes. I did seven takes. I did, and I wouldn't do it like that. And he said, "Hacinto." I know, even uh, Diana Ross in there, they, they, Diana Ross, and they're waiting for me to do it like the director is saying. I'm, I'm not feeling it. It's okay, Asinja, can you just do it because they were in Atlanta, we can only get this chance, a sense of uh, kind of being like in a hick southern club. Mm -hmm. He said, just give me one that I like. I literally, do you remember the movie Boomerang where you, the yeah. guy that got coordinate, you know? Mm -hmm. I literally had on that suit. I had on, they had, for some reason, that, that suit. So I did like this, I said, uh, Diana, go, you know who's out here? Martin Holly, come on, girl. And I did like this. And that's the one they took. <laughs> that's the take. That's why he's That is the take that they uh, oh, shot. Man. And uh, they, a director could do it to you. <laughs> you want to do this picture, Mr. Right. Or, or you just want to do it like this, or that's it? This is it, one shot. Okay. 
No, you take a picture. No, no, no. Okay.